Welcome back dear students of class 12. Today we will be starting with new chapter that is polymers. So polymer the name itself suggests poly means there are many repeating units. Okay. So let's go to the definition first. A polymer is a large molecule of very high molecular mass formed by the repeated combination of a very large number of one or more types of smaller molecules called monomers. So this is the basic definition. Now with this example, I'll try to make you understand. Okay. So whenever suppose we have say a molecule which is say a compound. Okay. A. Now this A. Whenever they, this A, there are so many A. Say n number of A. Okay. And this n is very very large, more than thousands. Now, whenever they look here before the reaction, they are all separate entity. They are separate. A exists as A individual. But after polymerization, what happens is now all these A are bonded together. See, this A is bonded with another A. This A is again bonded with another A. So now all those A, whenever they form a bond between themselves and this chain is very very large then this structure or the compound of chain after this bond formation between A is known as what? Polymer. So it is known as what? Polymer. Now this repeating see this A is being repeated here see A A A is being repeated. Now this individually A is known as what? Monomer. It is known as what? Monomer. Similarly, instead of just A A combining to give you the polymer, it could be that uh, the molecule of different kind they can come together and can stay in a very long chain. Okay, that example is here. See, there are say many A. See this many A and B they are combining together whenever they react together and there is a bond formation between A B A B in this pattern and it goes on. on. And this side also goes on, then that forms a very long chain, and that will give rise to what? Polymer. Okay, hope this is clear. Now, this simple example is polythene. The polythene that we use that is obtained from ethene. Okay, so monomeric unit is what? Ethene, and the polymer is what? Polythene. So, now let's discuss about the classification of polymers. Now, polymers can be classified based on different criteria. So, here we will be discussing few of them. So, the first one is classification on the basis of repeating units. So, we will be discussing about that. So, the first classification is Classification on the basis of repeating unit. Okay, classification on the basis of repeating. Unit. Now, see this example. See here in this polymer, in this polymer. Now, here what you see? This polymer is formed by only one type of molecule that is A only. Yes or no? Now, this A is what? Monomer, as I told you. Now, whenever there is only repetition of one kind of monomer, and that gives you a very long chain which results in the formation of polymer. Then this is known as what? Homo polymer. So, based on repeating in unit, it can be classified into homo polymer. And the second one is co polymer. The second one is co polymer. 
Now the name itself suggests homo means same type, same kind. This is an example of homo polymer. Now copolymer. Now copolymer. This has to be just the opposite of what homo polymer. Now in this copolymer, the repeating unit will be different. It could be two or more than two. Here, as this is an example where we have a this polymer where this polymer is formed by two different types of molecule that is A and B. Therefore, this second one is an example of what? Copolymer. Okay? And in particular, if you have to take the example of homo polymer, then you can take the example of ethene combining and molecule of ethene combining to give you Polythene. This is polythene. Now here in polythene, the repeating unit is on is only one type. That is this ethene. Okay. So this n means n could be n n is the this number of ethene molecule. Now similarly for copolymer, if you want to take a particular example, then we can take the example of rubber. The rubber is obtained from Butadiene that is CH2 CH CH double bond CH2. This is butadiene. Whenever this reacts with styrene that is CH double bond CH2. Okay. Now this is a different. Monomeric unit and this is different, these two are not the same. Therefore, this is an example of a copolymer. So let me write the uh, this polymer of this rubber. This is butadiene, this is styrene. And this is butadiene. Now whenever you write in the polymeric form, you have to follow this pattern, okay? See? This will form a bond with this carbon, that means this carbon will be bonded to this, and this double bond will be will be used up in forming a bond with another molecule, another molecule. Okay? Now once this happens, then this bond will shift here. Okay? Now we write this together. So let me write here CH2 single bond CH. Double bond CH CS2. Now this is bonded with this CS2 CH2 CH. Now here you have a benzene ring. Now this is used in the formation of bond, and here also because this has to exist in a very long chain, this also has to exist in very long chain. Therefore, this is the polymeric form of what? Polymeric form of rubber. Okay, so here if n number of them n number of them are combining and you can represent it as whole n. Okay, so this is the <coughs> polymer of rubber. So the, we have discussed classification on the basis of what repeating unit. Now let's discuss about the classification on the basis of mode of polymer polymerization. Okay. On the basis of classification, now on the basis of mode of polymerization. Okay, so again, on the basis of mode of polymerization, it can be classified again into two categories one is addition polymerization, the other one is condensation. 
So number one is addition. And the second one is condensation. So in addition, polymerization, what will happen? Now here, the molecule they get added up. Okay? Now for example, the example of polythene. Again, okay, here you can use the example of what? Polythene. Now ethene, 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 so many ethenes, they come together, they get added up together to give you polythene. So that is the example of addition polymerization. So here what happens? N number of molecules they come and get added to form the polymer. Now here, no elimination takes place. Nothing gets eliminated. Whatever is the monomeric unit, that will add up and give you the polymer. But in condensation, here what will happen? For condensation, type of polymerization, what has to happen is, there has to be two different functional groups, okay? Present in the monomeric unit, and whenever they come together, to form the polymer, small molecule like water, ammonia, they get eliminated to form the to form the polymer. So this example of addition polymerization again is can be given by formation of polythene. So you have CH2, CH2. Here this side also this side also it has to be bonded there are n number of what this repeating unit this is the example of addition polymerization nothing is getting eliminated but in case of condensation polymer polymerization as i told you small molecule like water ammonia gets eliminated so let's take the example example of nylon 6 so that we get it from hexa methyl Diamine that is NH2, NH2. This is hexamethylene diamine. Whenever it reacts with the uh, adipic acid, adipic acid is COOH. Here we have CS2, four of them, and here again we have COOH. So this is the, this is the this is the formula for adipic acid. And that is hexamethylene diamine. Okay? So whenever hexamethylene diamine, it contains an acid group, you can see that functional group, and this adipic acid contains COOH functional group. So these two are different monomeric units containing different functional group. Now whenever such type of monomeric unit they come together to form the polymer then that will give rise to condens condensation type of polymerization here what happens a molecule of water gets eliminated so i can represent this as nh h that is nh2 itself so here a molecule of water gets eliminated and the rest of the rest of the this uh, reactants get condensed okay so if i have to write the polymer form of this compound then let me write the polymer form here so i'm going to write the product formed by this reaction here okay so we have nh2 starting from here cs2 all six. Now I have got NH. Now this NH is bonded with C double bond O. C double bond O. CH two. All four. COOH. So this is the unit form. Whenever two of them they condense. Okay. When two molecule gets condensed. Now, if I have to write this in polymeric form, that means this chain will keep on continuing. This side also, this side also. So, whatever you have observed here. So, whenever this side, it has to, if it is bonded with another molecule of this reactant, any one of the reactant, like this adipic acid, this side, and what will happen? 
Again, this one hydrogen will be eliminated. So, while writing the polymeric form, you have to write in this manner, okay? So, this one hydrogen will be eliminated, and from here, what was eliminated from here? From adipic acid, OH part was eliminated. So, if it has to form a bond this side, then again, what will happen? OH would be eliminated, and you would be having C double bond O. Yes or no? This OH would be eliminated, then this whole M means now M number of times they have got repeated and they have condensed together to give you polymeric form. So this is the example of what condensation polymerization and is the example of and is its name is nylon 66. Okay, so please remember this. Now again. We are going to discuss about the classification on the basis of molecular forces now. So classification on the basis of molecular forces existing between the polymer. On the basis of molecular forces that exist between the polymer. Now based on that, based on this, this can again be classified into four different types. The first one is elastomers. Second is fiber. The third one is thermoplastics. And the fourth and the final one is it is thermosetic. Thermosetic. So, so based on molecular forces existing in the polymer, they can be classified into four types. Elastomers, the name is the list. Elastomers means what? They can be stretched. So here, if it can be stretched, then what type of forces will act here between the molecules? The forces here in elastomers will be the weakest of all the all other types. So the weakest forces exist in elastomer. And uh, the chains they have coiled chains. So coiled chains means what? It can be stressed, and once it is left, what will happen? It will come back to its original position. So here, elastomers it has what? It has coiled chains along with few cross links. These cross links will help it to whenever the force is released. Now you stress it. Once the force is released, what will happen? It will come back to its original shape or position. That is because of cross link that exists between the chain in the polymer. Okay? So this you have to remember. Now, let's move on to the fiber. Now this fiber are uh, just the opposite of elastomers. In fibers, the strongest type of intermolecular forces of attraction exists. Like hydrogen bonding, dipole dipole interactions. Okay? And because of that, they are what? They are very rigid. They are very rigid. And their density is also very high. One thing you have to remember, what? Because the intramolecular forces are very strong. Because of that, they exist in what? Crystalline form. Crystalline form. And one you know, crystalline forms, they will be having high melting point. So these are the things that you have to remember. Okay? The types of forces that acts. Now in thermoplastics, the thermoplastics, the molecule, the type of molecular forces in thermoplastics are in between elastomers and fibers. It's neither too strong nor too weak. So this you have to remember. Okay. 
And one more thing you have to remember now, see. Thermoplastics, they soften on heating and moreover, they have linear, okay, they have a linear chain with no cross linkage. They have a linear chain with no cross linkage and because of which, they soften on heating. And once it is cooled to normal temperature, they again become hard. The examples of thermoplastics are uh, polythene, PVC, PVC, Teflon, etc. Now, let's discuss about thermosettings. Now, in thermosettings, the, those polymers are categorized as thermosettings with changes irreversibly, irreversibly into hard rigid and infusible material on heating. So, thermoplastics is reversible whereas thermosettings they are what? They are irreversible. Once it is heated, the change is permanent, becomes what? Hard, rigid and infusible. Now here you have to remember one more thing that upon heating what happens? There is extensive interlinkage between the different chains. Between the different chains, there is extensive interlinkage because of this now exists in three. Now because of this, it forms a three-dimensional network, and because of which it is not reversible. So you have to remember this too. Example of this thermosetting is backlight, backlight, resins, etc. So this was for today. So we have discussed. We have discussed polymers, classification of polymers on the basis of the repeating unit. It was classified into homomer, homopolymer and copolymer. Classification on the basis of mode of polymerization. It again, it had two different types. One is addition, the other one is condensation. Now, classification on the basis of molecular forces, it can be classified into four different categories. So here what you have to remember is, you have to remember there are properties, examples, differences can be asked and it has been asked so many times in ISA. Okay, so this was for today, we will be seeing you in the next video, till then take care, thank you.